listening to the Astral Hour. I'm your host, Astral Meadow. Join me as we take a glimpse into the mysterious. Welcome everyone and thank you for tuning into the show. I've been really looking forward to this episode and getting the chance to introduce you all to my friend Shakina Dawn. She has an eclectic array of skill sets such as biomagnetic, color, sound, and vibrational therapy. She's a certified crystal and energy medicine practitioner, a Reiki master teacher, quantum healer, and spiritual medium. She also specializes in biofield tuning, emotion code, the emotional freedom technique, and the I Ching. She integrates these modalities based on the need of the client in the moment of discovery. Thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Thank you. So you have a lot of different titles and a lot of different areas of practice. Looking back, do you feel that you were always called to be a spiritual healer? Or is it something that you found and then worked your way into? Well, I I know that I was always, um, I always had these gifts. And uh, my mother called them gifts of God. Mm -hmm. Um, So I have actually spent a lifetime uh, really understanding that they they had more meaning than just walking every day and just seeing things and feeling things. Um, So being called into the conscious healing of it uh, came into into play in uh, 2018. So in 2018, I, uh, I allowed it to come through and had the wherewithal to know that in the future, certifications are going to be required uh, to do what I did naturally. So I started diving into getting certified in what I, I guess I was born into. Mm-hmm. All right. So, yeah, because I, I always think of, like, someone like Edgar Casey, you know, like, his parents, you know, were noticing stuff really young, you know, that he was, like, seeing his, you know, deceased loved ones. I think that was the first thing, and... I don't know. It's just like it was always with him. So I always wonder when someone else says they're a spiritual medium, like if it was something, you know, that they were born with or whatnot. Yeah, my mother um, it was very taboo in the in the Christian world. Mm-hmm. So when my mother started recognizing that uh, my premonitions were happening, right? Um, she did a very taboo thing in the Christian world, which was start studying dreams. Mm-hmm. Um, and then whenever I would see something, um, she had a, her best friend was Native American. So they would <laughs> come and do these cleansing rituals that mm. just was normal to me. Right. To, I mean, I, I didn't know, I didn't know that it was taboo for the Christian world until my mother said, don't tell people these right. things, just tell me mm-hmm. and we'll, we'll work it. So we <laughs> kind of had our own little secret society, my mother and I. Well, that's beautiful that she could, you know, work with you and sort of also I guess protect you from right people like shooting you down or calling you crazy or something so you could really I don't know embrace that as a gift so um let's see I'm trying to think of where to get started with this all right um what is the biofield how do you tune it and what are some of its uh some issues it's known to help with so we are all energetic beings Mm -hmm. um so we have a biofield around us, and there's different layers of it, um, and they have more tec- technical names. Uh, when I was studying uh, this particular modality, uh, to me, the names got in the way um, mm-hmm. f- of what I could just see. Right. Um, because when I see a client, um, I see their their energy spots where they're off, um, and then I, you know. Uh, talk to them and find out the emotion behind what's holding that blockage or Mm -hmm. what what even caused the blockage um and so there's there's these tools and beautiful tools they're called tuning forks Mm -hmm. um so for me it's like getting into the what did i discover when when talking to the client um helping them understand the emotional attachment that has basically caused this particular we'll call it an issue. Um, I think that there's probably more technical terms, but again, for me, it was not about 
the technical terms of it as to what it could do. Mm-hmm. So vibration is, is healing. So vibration within in, in anything. If you've seen the water droplet hit, you know, if you see a drop of water hit the water and it ripples out, mm-hmm. that's vibration. Right. And our bodies, when they're not resonating in a particular frequency, if something's got them off or whatever, you can, you know, for me, I can see it in the physical body of, okay, um, what does this mean and how do I fix it? So when you get through the talking points, whatever the emotion is behind it and say, okay, um, th- there's the other part of uh, in biofield and, and any of it is, are you ready to release it? Right. Um, because if you're not, what I do and what any anybody else that works in these modalities is like putting a Band-Aid on it. Right. As soon as you go out the door, it's going to right. arise again. Yeah. Most people recognize that. It's like, oh, I felt wonderful when it's in here. As soon as I got out the door, it was like, hit me again. Right. Um, but, you know, they didn't, weren't ready to release it. So, you know, biofield tuning is basically taking a particular frequency that's on the tuning fork and you go into that area. So since we have different levels, different chakras, uh, there's different colors. Mm-hmm. You know, mine are colored, but there's different frequencies. Right. That you can basically bring the body back into resonance, bring that particular area back into the frequency that makes the body harmonious mm-hmm. or harmony. Bring it back into harmony. Um, so the other part of um, biofield tuning that, that I appreciated learning was because most of the time when you see something or when you have a pain in an area, you're like, oh, I'm going to go right for that area. Um, With biofield tuning, that's not what happens. Um, You actually work around the area Mm -hmm. to kind of get the area into a frequency. And then once you've brought all of that into it's 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 hard to explain the visual parts that I see, but you can see it kind of. At a, almost at a line, and that's when you can take the, the, the center point, the part that feels like it has most pain, and you just, you just tap it, mm-hmm. and the vibration goes, and you put that tuning fork directly on the spot after you've worked around the areas. So it's kind of just like what I explained. When we talk about the emotion behind what's going on in a particular area in the body, mm-hmm. and then we go for it. Right. So biofield tuning kind of does the same. So okay. we work around the area, and then you hit the spot. Right. And then okay. you clear it out. Okay. So, so biofield tuning is, is basically that. So would you, ex- like, compare the biofield to the aura, you know, as a simplified thing? Or is there layers, you know, like emotional or etheric? Or is it beyond that? As far as... Uh, I mean, I, I see the aura as colors mm-hmm. and not necessarily frequencies, even though I'm sure that, and I'm kind of, I, I kind of, um, it kind of all comes together right. because frequencies and color, you know, are one in the same. You don't get a color without a specific, specific frequency range. Right. Right. right? So yes and no. <laughs> Right. When I was uh, looking into all this stuff um, and, you know, I'm trying to look at it all separately, you know, to study it. But as I was doing it, I'm like, you really are using it all like together. You know, it's all, you know, builds on each other. So the color, the sound, you know, um, the magnetic, like it's I can see because I've had one of your sessions, how it's just so organically combined, you know, for this full healing, healing experience. But it's very unique to you because not many people have all this background, you know, so, but it just works so beautifully together, you know? Well, thank you. I mean, I, I spent, so I spent 26 years in the corporate world, um, doing the fighting, the battle of integrating everything to work on one platform. Mm -hmm. And so when I stepped into this and out of the corporate world, I was kind of frustrated. I'm like, why did I spend 26 years engineering things and and creating things and now I'm not doing it? Mm -hmm. And then I realized that, you know, when you, what I noticed in the corporate world is when you work in one field and you become a so-called 
SME, which is a subject matter expert. When you become a subject matter expert in one field um, and somebody walks in your door and you only help them with one thing and, right. they, and then you can you have to send them somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't send people other places. There's many right. times that I will send people to Shanti and, uh-huh. and say, no, I really think that, that you could benefit from, from her. Although we have the same goal, we have mm-hmm. different techniques that we use. Right. So to me, it only makes sense because if somebody's sitting there and, and in that moment of opening up this raw uh, part of themselves, I can't help them. And I'm like, eh. you know, it's <laughs> like I kind of just open something up and I can't help you. Right. And I don't know that that for me, um, I would not want someone leaving that doesn't have some grasp of what's going on and mm-hmm. some way to work with it right so kind of working in all those modalities together for me that's it's necessary to be able to understand bits and pieces and then allow it to come in right and really treat the whole being and not just the symptom itself so I was going to go in with the quantum healing and sort of talk about it um you know a lot of these seem like they're you know multiple multiple dimensional healing techniques so it might manifest physically, like you might physically feel better. But I feel like, you know, the way that I'm, you know, getting it is like, it's, it's healing these deeper aspects of ourselves that some people might not even be aware of, like that they even have anything. So it's almost like, like a fifth dimensional healing, but it's manifesting in this third dimensional way. Is that how, is that kind of how quantum healing works? Could you describe that? So Quantum is basically something happening. It, like it almost happens instantaneously, mm-hmm. but then at the same time, slowly opens up. If right. that makes any kind of sense, um, the the part of understanding that it's not just a two dimensional or three dimensional mm-hmm. healing that it's happening on all different levels in ways that you cannot comprehend until you get there. Mm -hmm. So opening the door is one thing. Right. Um, But then kind of, and that's kind of what I do. Um, Part of what I did when I, when we started was, was calling that part in to get out of my head Mm -hmm. and allow my, my senses, my inner knowing of these things opening up to offer back to, to the client. Right. Um, so when, when the healing happens, you know, I've had clients come in and go, um, I really felt great when I left, but like three weeks later, I got it. Mm -hmm. And so that's that continual, it's just continuing to come and go and come and go and and go. Right. Like once you've initiated it, the healing is, you know, it's like going across different parts of your timeline. I did this past life, um, session the other day and when we did our healing the the moment of discovery like that word was abandonment for me right and you know I was thinking of it in just terms of like this present lifetime and you know like my emotions with this life but when I was doing the past life work it came out that I had been orphaned a lot like I was an orphan in most of my timelines and I was thinking wow like when we did the magnets you know, in my mind, we were focused on abandonment, but I was just thinking in the present moment more or like in my past, but I I didn't really think about, you know, the, the depth of like it spanning across other lifetimes, you know? So like, that's one of the epiphanies when you say it's a kind of ongoing, like as soon as I got done with that session, I was like, that's really deep. Like she really, she really did something. But when I, when I discovered this orphan thing, because we had worked, like you did something on my head with a magnet and, and you were like, it's now like you can think about this without it being like painful or like, I'm not going to be triggered by it. But like, so when I discovered this orphan thing, like it didn't really bother me, you know, it's like, like I wasn't really attached to the idea of abandonment anymore. So I, I could almost look at it as like an outside observer and not be like set off by it, you know? So that's definitely something I noticed. Beautiful. Yeah. So it's be, becoming the witness to those, um, you know, bringing this kind of bringing the, a word. When I say a word, it, it's interesting to me how it comes to me. Um, mm-hmm. 
um, and with different clients. It's, it's I see it, and it doesn't make sense to me, but I'm just going to say it. Um, and, the, and the reality is, is no matter what I do, it is to really open that door. Mm-hmm. And then the work is really on you from that point forward. Right. Um, to take what we did in our session and then just like, eh, and do nothing more with it. Right. Um, leaves you kind of in a stalemate. So it's kind of, you know, if I give you that understanding, when we bring things into our awareness, mm-hmm. um, it means that every time you are aware of it, now you can be the witness to right. it. Right. And it not really affect you. That's when you know you're really like, like on the upswing. Right. That it's know. like, like healing has occurred. You know, it's right. not just some idea, like something shifted right. in my being, you know, to where I don't get triggered now when I think about these things that are kind of sad, you know, that happened on my timeline. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's a really freeing thing. And, you know, one of the reasons I wanted you on the show is because I want people to know that that's an an option, like that there are people out there that can hear your story and witness your story and work with you, you know, on this deep level to get to those points, you know, that maybe like, I didn't think when I saw you, I wasn't like, Oh, we're going to work on abandonment today. (laughs) I had no idea. I just, I felt called to you. I knew that there was, you know, a next wave of my life with my grandmother passing. I knew she was about to pass. Um, and it was making me sad and I was losing some friends like going that were moving. So yeah, I mean, I guess if I sat down, I might've thought, okay, I'm scared that they're abandoning me or something, but I didn't really know, you know, what to expect. And I don't know. It's just such a beautiful experience that I, I think about it very often. Like think I'll, I'll do something and it like brings me back to being on the table, you know? So yeah, it's, it's beautiful. I, I really hope more people, <laughs> you know, can get that sense of like seeking someone out to help in those areas, you know? So, um, okay. So maybe we could talk about like some crystal stuff. Cause I've been reading, um, the crystal enlightenment book you, you, um, talked about and it is really cool. It really helped me focus on parts of the crystal healing that I didn't, you know, it kind of gets overwhelming cause it's like this encyclopedia, like, right. It's like hundreds of crystals. So I always, I've gotten very comfortable with my clear quartz and my amethyst and my tourmaline. And that is just the ones that I work with. Like, I think the other ones are so pretty when I see them, but I'm just not like drawn to drop all this money on it. Where my friends get kind of caught in this like addiction and they're like, oh, crystals, you know, I need to buy another crystal. And I'm like, you know, I don't want to feel like it's controlling my life to buy them. But so I've been working just with certain ones, but when I was reading the book, like it opened me up to thinking about, um, like the shapes are, you know, they're different. They, they do something different than like a cluster or like a piece. So could you kind of go into, you know, what you know about crystals and like how you use them in your work? So the first thing I don't do is use them. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I work with them. Mm-hmm. Um, when we use anything, mm-hmm. it becomes um, a control thing. Right. Uh, so when we use energy, um, it becomes a force of power. Mm. So, and, and I'm very careful, very conscious with, with that part of it. Right. So um, I do work with them. Um, most of the time they call me. Uh-huh. Um, Crystal, uh, the the clear quartz crystals, in my opinion, are some of the best to work with because if you want clarity, Mm -hmm. you will get it with a clear quartz crystal. That's that's what it does. There's no no other energy to vibrate vibrate through it. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have tourmaline, you have more the heart chakra. Mm -hmm. But if you want it all the way through, total clear clarity on a particular subject, it's just sitting with any quartz you know yes some of them have uh higher frequencies because they've been cut a certain way such as the vogel crystal um but it it really if you're being called to work with a particular crystal there's a reason there's more than just oh this is pretty Uh uh-huh um but i've i've worked with stones and crystals my entire life um 
So I have a very vast collection. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm obsessed. Um, <laughs> right. You're not always like always thinking like, oh, I need one more. I need one more. Like you get called to them. Right. And and the interesting part is most of the time I give them away. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, if somebody comes into, uh, for instance, I, I went into a crystal shop here in town um, and I'm sorry, I forgot it. <laughs> Stones of Spirit. So, yeah, my apologies on that, Linda. Um, I went into Stones of Spirit, and all of a sudden, I'm being called to buy Jet. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I don't need Jet. I don't work with Jet. But it would not leave me alone. So I bought <laughs> three pieces of Jet. So um, a few weeks later, I was out in my, on my porch, and um, I said, okay, who's going with me today? And Jet was like, me and I'm like and it was so big and I'm like I can't put you in my pocket you're not coming with me today and I had learned the lesson previous that if they call take them right so I went back out and said okay fine you're coming with me today and so I went to take my daughter and her grandmother to lunch and then uh, there was a woman having a seizure in line mm. and for whatever reason the jet said I'm going home with her mm. so I walked over and I, she sat at the table. I said, I noticed what happened. I said, I would love to give you a stone. Um, and she said, you know, her and her husband looked at me like I had four heads. <laughs> and um, I said, this is Jet. And what I need you to do is just squeeze it three times when you feel a seizure coming on. Mm -hmm. And it'll help. So I went home. I'm like, why did I just give this woman this stone? And, and really, so come to find out, Jet is one of the, the main stones to use to help to give somebody with a seizure. Oh, wow. Um, she was having one. She was standing in line. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, uh, I work with them as I feel called to work with them. Mm -hmm. um, and generally, it has nothing to do with what I think. It's what the client needs. It's, right. It's what they need. And then I'm like, okay, you, you need this stone. Uh -huh. Sometimes I gift it to them, and sometimes I guide them to, to go get one. Right. Um, because sometimes my stone's like, nope, nope, I'm staying with you because we've got some, uh, some more work to do. Right. So it just depends um, where I see it, you know, where I see it in the body that they need it. Um, if some, sometimes before the client even gets there, it's like front and center, a stone will come and say, we're working with her today. And this, the moment something comes out, I'm like, okay, I need you to hold this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I might have done that with you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think need, I held something. I don't remember which one. need you to hold this stone because um, it's going to help with your willingness. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I just, I love, I love crystals. They, I love the energy. I love the earth energy that they have. Mm -hmm. um, I'm drinking um, a Lemurian crystal I have been since December of last year. Mm -hmm. And so one thing um, that I'd love to share about that in particular is that they gave me the message that, you know, first of all, water is intelligent. Mm -hmm. And when you put a crystal in the water, it reactivates the water. Mm -hmm. So then what happens is that the nutrients that are actually within the crystal, the minerals and the nutrients, then activate in the water mm -hmm. and so what I have found and what I found last year was that I wasn't eating although it doesn't look that way right now but I wasn't really necessarily eating I had to make myself eat mm -hmm. and I'm like why am I I'm not hungry and then so the crystal said well all the nutrients that you need are right. in this water it's that you're drinking. you already have all the minerals like that you need yeah the, the minerals and the nutrition so uh -huh. you know we have to be careful with that because some stones are toxic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, I had a dear friend call me and, or send me a picture said, this is in my water. I'm like, take that obsidian out of your water. Right. <laughs> like, you don't want to drink that. And then days later, she was having these crazy nightmares. Ugh. I said, and that's why you don't want an obsidian in your water. Right. Um, and, and then it, it's also a toxic stone to put in the water. Right. Too. It like breaks down into it. Yeah. Do you suggest like for some of those kind of stones, would you suggest someone like sitting at next to their water or just not using them at all like does that energy itself have like a toxic um outcome when you ingest it like even next to the water well so as i mentioned a crystal is going to call you mm -hmm. so if you're ready to release that that's coming up right. and and you're called to do it yes put it outside of it but mm -hmm. you really truly need to be ready to release right um I get questions all the time, like, what stone is best for me? And mm -hmm. I'm like, 
you know, that's like giving you an aspirin and say, this aspirin is going to work for everything that you have. Uh huh. That's not the case. Right. So um, if you're called to a stone and you don't know why, I can certainly tell you why, but mm-hmm. you need to be ready to hear why. <laughs> right. Like, are you really ready to, to understand what's coming? Um, so, and the other, the other thing is Moldavite. Mm-hmm. Um, I was, I almost wanted to ask you about Moldavite because a lot of people do not like the stone. Like I see it in groups and they're like, it makes me feel sick. Like l- even looking at a picture of Moldavite and I'm kind of, you know, turned off, not turned off. Like I'm not judging it, you know, right. but there's something about it that's just really intense, you know? So it's a very, very, very powerful stone. Right. Uh, it's not really from earth. So Moldav- it doesn't look like it's from Earth. It looks <laughs> yeah. alien. To me. It, it is. It came. From, it was a meteor that that hit the Earth, and um, what happened was it when it hit the sand or the stone where it was, it became this beautiful green glass. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a game changer. Uh huh. It when you are called to it, you truly, really, uh, you, when you you will meet the dark night of the soul. Uh huh. Um, and I highly suggest never taking a bath with one until you've. <laughs> You know, worked with it. I made that mistake and yeah. went into the second dark night of the soul, oh. um, and not realizing that I was doing that. But um, there are, there's going to be time. You know, some people there. There's a, it's just this hot word right now. Moldavite, Moldavite, Moldavite. Uh-huh. And as Shanti could tell you, that I would um, take it away from more people than I would say you're <laughs> ready for it. Right. Um, her daughter actually was like, I'm going to go get some mold. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> and so I went and grabbed one and I said, okay, take this home with you. If you don't have a mental breakdown, then you might be ready for right. it. Right. Um, and so she was, so that was good. <laughs> but, um, you know, there just comes a time when you are like so called to it. Um, but what I'm finding is that when you're really called to it, the, the heart is so really ready to just be okay with everything that was you know holding you back in the right. past um so that when it comes up but i always tell people if you are re- if you really think you're ready for moldavite uh, <laughs> please place it with ruby okay so because, like they balance each other maybe correct yeah kind of the 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 so ruby worked with the the root chakra but it mm-hmm. also works with the heart chakra so it really helps make it a little more easy mm-hmm. so if they're being called to it um I would definitely say if you buy it, buy a ruby and set it with it. Right. And then it'll be a little easier to yes. work with. Um, but, yeah, it's 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 no joke. And that's some people get it because why? Why, did it, why does it make them sick? Because mm-hmm. there's something so deep rooted within their beliefs. Right. It's that shaking that up. It is really. It's like, no, no, no. We're, we're, we're pulling this out right now. It's <laughs> like. It's like just going in for surgery and not getting any any kind of pain medication for the right. surgery. It's like I'm going to be awake for this whole thing and feel it all. Right. Okay. <laughs> so that's what Moldavite will do. <laughs> right. Yeah. My friend, um, he wraps crystals and he's not necessarily connected to the energies or anything. Like he he doesn't look mm-hmm. at that. He's just a very good artist. So um, he's like, I've worked with all of these stones at this point, but I will not work with Moldavite again. He said every time I would sit down to work on it, it was just, you know, like I couldn't focus. And like it was just like pulling out all these feet. And, and that, I just was like, that's so, you know, a good example of how like crystals and stuff will work. Even if you're not aware, if you don't believe in it, it's still affecting you right you know on some level even if you you know you think it's a quackery thing or whatever so (laughs) yeah I mean for me the the one thing I would suggest is with any stone um if it's starting to pull that kind of stuff out of you the best way to work with it is Mm -hmm. say what are you trying to tell me right and really get to it instead of just yeah just sit with it and just and the, the interesting thing is to pay attention to the, the littlest things that it's going to tell you. Right. And then and just be like, does this have to do with that? Oh, oh, oh. And then it's like, thank you. Right. <laughs> Sometimes they leave. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're like, oh, where do, I just had this stone right here. It's gone. Well, especially Moldavite. Moldavite will get up <laughs> and leave. If you are not in, if you've been in tune with it and then you, your vibration goes off and you're not in tune. It'll go away. Right. It'll absolutely go away. Yeah. I think about, well, lately I've just been thinking about the quote and I posted it on someone's thing the other day. It's like when, when the student is ready, the teacher appears, but like crystals are also teachers. It's like 
they really will show up. You know, I was on a, a walk one day and I walked like to the quarry, didn't see a crystal, uh, walked back to my car and there's just an amethyst laying on the ground. And I'm like, I feel like I would have noticed this on the way there, but it, I wasn't ready right. <laughs> until after I went to the quarry and had, you know, like the still moment or whatever. So like it, it really did manifest for me. And it, it's not like that happens to me often, but it, it's a prime example of like, I was ready Mm-hmm. and there it was and I have no idea where it went now you know at some point I guess somebody else has it now like you know so it just so I have a crazy story I'd like to share okay I had a, a dear friend that came up and did an immersion program with Shanti and I um in July of 2020 and you know she brought some crystals because she wanted to you know go out to the mountain and cleanse them so we did so so we get to the mountains and I open up the box because some of it can't be in water so I'm like unpacking and I pack this bag and we go and we have our session under the under the waterfall and then we're leaving. I didn't want to do cleanse the crystals there. There was I wanted to find a more isolated spot. Mm-hmm. So we pull crystal out and I show her how I cleanse them. And um, then she was telling me, she goes, hey, you know, do they disappear on you? Because I swear about this one. So she's telling me this whole story. <laughs> and I go, yeah. And then they'll come back when you're ready. When right. you're resonating with it, they'll come right back to you. And about that time, I put my hand in the bag. I had my hand on this big square stone. I don't know what it is. I, I go to pull it out, and it was this lightning. Just like it felt like real lightning comes down, and just this energy just pops. Mm-hmm. And it pops so hard it knocked me on my rear end. Actually, knocked me into her. Mm-hmm. And the stone went flying out of my hand. And she was like, "Oh my gosh, are you okay?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah." She goes, "What was that flash?" And I go, "I don't have any idea." <laughs> But the stone went behind me, and then I saw this shimmer in front of me, and I said, I don't know. We'll look for that stone in a minute. Hold on. So I go over, and I grab something out of the water, mm-hmm. and there's this amethyst. And I think she turned white and st- did three or four steps back. She said, I swear to God, that is the stone that has been missing. <gasps> wow. And I said, and that's how it comes back to you, just like that. And right. I said, and I go, it's happened to me before with my, my pendulum. Mm-hmm. And, I, and she goes, I'm nobody's going to believe me when I tell this story. And I said, they don't need to believe you. Right. We saw it. We witnessed it. And I'm like, you know, are you okay? And mm-hmm. she's like, yeah. And I go, well, you're, you're clearly back in alignment to, to work with it. So, wow. Yeah. So, yeah. And she happen. actually pulled another one out of her pocket. She goes, <laughs> I swear, I've only had two amethysts. Here's the one. And I haven't seen that one since I bought it. Oh, I yeah. said, well, if the bra comes back in, because there's a whole bra story with it. I'm like, <laughs> that'll really freak me out if a bra drops out of the sky. But yeah yeah i found um my dad bought me this crystal necklace one time and it was a quartz and it it had been drilled like a screw into the necklace and i lost it and it had been years i'd forgotten about it you know and after my dad passed away this is like five years after he gave this thing to me i was doing laundry and it was sitting right there next to the dryer and i was like this is wild but i I had been really kind of sad about Something, you know, that week with my dad had really stirred some grief mm. up. And I was like, oh, my God, how beautiful that this crystal. You know, my dad's not even really into crystals. Like, he got it because he knew I was, you know. Yeah. So, it's like it's, it's like his essence was kind chills. of in it, too. You know, I was like, oh, thank you, you know, for yeah. coming to me, like, right then, you know. Right. And it was a very clear cut to where it was easily recognizable. And I could see, you know, the point where it had been attached. So, yeah, that's the, my experience on one oh. that I had lost that I found me years later. It's really a cool thing to experience. So, um, I was going to ask, like, you hear people talk about clearing and charging and, like, how important is that? You know, um, do you clear yours, like, you know, with the full moon, the new moon or? So, in any energy work, mm-hmm. I will say there's no right way or wrong way to do it. Right. So whatever you feel called to do, um, do it. Um, you know, I used to live on the, the 12th hole of a golf course. And I would take a big table out every full moon. Mm-hmm. And I would just fill it up with all my crystals. And I really didn't care what any of my neighbors thought. <laughs> um, which I, I did get some looks like, what is she doing over there? Yeah. Um, so I used to do that. Um, but then I just got called really more to you know in our in our home we do so much sound healing Mm -hmm. that the when the frequency is right any energy that any crystal may have absorbed will dissipate Mm -hmm. so 
but I still feel called sometimes. I'm like, oh, we're going to the river. Hold on a minute. <laughs> I'll bag, I'll pack a bag of different crystals that are like, okay, I really need to be cleansed. Right. Um, so is it important? Yes. Right. Um, but not all of them need that. You're going to find that when you start grabbing them, some of them are like, no, 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 I'm good. Right, because um, there's a couple like selenite that's just... Selenite, yeah. Or selenite, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That just doesn't really... It, it charges crystals. Exactly. So you don't really have to put that on the moonlight, you know? Right. So it's really cool to learn all the different personalities and which ones, you right. know, that you need to work with more. Like which ones absorb more or, you know, might need more right. uh, maintenance. So and the important thing to know is that if a crystal breaks... Mm-hmm. It's done what it was meant to do. Right. It has absorbed. The, the, the energy is so much within. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be without. Mm-hmm. But within, there's something that that crystal is there to do and right. help you with mm-hmm. that it will just break. You know, right. I've had I've had um, someone actually apologize to me because I, I handed them a stone. And then the presence of them in, in that time frame, it snapped in two. And they wow. were like, I'm so sorry I broke. I'm like, no, don't apologize. It did what it was, what it said it needed to do for you. Right. And then, then she was like, oh, my gosh, I feel much better. And I'm like, okay, now we'll just take and bury half of it. And then you can gift the other half to someone else or you can keep it. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are things that I've learned um, to do. But, you know, the music, um, but I can promise you if you're playing music that are like, mm-hmm. you know, you don't want that. Energy. Right. And it just, you know, throw on some whatever native american flute music or whatever you feel right. called to that that really has that great frequency that's right. just and you can do it that way run it underwater i mean mm-hmm. i love taking it to the river and just right. i can feel it just like oh, oh thank you right yes i need to do that out thanks for taking me to the waterfall <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah so they really are like living beings kind of, you know it's Absolutely. like these multi-dimensional yeah. I don't know, but so like when they break and you say they're done, is that like do do they have like a spiritual essence that leaves and like goes to this their next place or, you know, I always wonder about that, you know, because I yeah. I do imagine them as being alive, you know, when I work with them and like just like a plant is, you know, mm-hmm. so all basil, you know, it needs the same environment, it acts the same, it grows the same. Mm-hmm. But it's different, you know. They are kind of different from each other, but there's like this hive mind or something of all basil. But I think like that with like a quartz, like it's all, you know, quartz all has the same energy, but then it shifts like when it's with a person. So right. like that's like, you know, like it's it's using your personality and growing like with you. So like I feel like the stone itself it grows by working with us. You know, like we teach each other something. But right. then I always think like is this stone going to go on into some other life form? You know, is it going to like reincarnate or something into, you know, a more yeah. dense or light energy? I don't know. It's just a weird thing that I'll, I think about sometimes. Like, Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I certainly feel um, the same. Uh, when you can feel the energy of a crystal, then you know that it's alive. It, I have I have one in a particular water that if you put it in your hand, mm-hmm. and everybody, even people that say they don't ever feel anything from crystals, uh-huh. I'll put it in their hand. And I'm like, I can feel the heartbeat. It's like a, it's like a boom, boom, boom. I'm like, yeah, right. it has a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah, it is a living being. Right. Um, and so uh, I I have felt the energy come out when when crystals have broken mm-hmm. so it's a beautiful thank you for that because it's a beautiful visual of saying oh you're going on when right, I it crosses it's yeah, crossing over yeah it's crossing over it's like when i see an, an animal um on the road uh, right. you know, i'm like oh thank you for everything that you've contributed mm-hmm. um and may your next life be beautiful right um so it's kind of the same. I'm going to have that same little thought now when I see a crystal break. I'm like, oh, you've been released. Right. Um, so, and sometimes I feel like I have one that has a face in it and it has a, a ghost um, uh, tipped in it. Mm-hmm. And um, it's not called a ghost tip. It went out of my head, what they call it. Um, but I'm always talking to it. Like, you know, at some point, I, I know you're going to want to be released. You know? Right. <laughs> like, at some point, you're going to have to let it go. Like, yeah. So that quote where it was like, when, when you're ready, the teacher appears, but when you're really ready, the teacher disappears. Disappears, So that's the thing, like it's, it's going on, you know, like 
it doesn't want you to be so dependent that you can't, you know, balance your own energy because at some level, yeah, they support us. But I feel like once we get into like living in our true, you know, selves and like connecting to the divine and everything, we don't really need the crystals like they're friends and supportive, right. but like we actually can do all this stuff. Right. You know, it's all inside of us already. We have the same essence as that crystal, you right. know. So, in one of our Reiki trainings, um, I had a young lady uh, ask me, you know, I swear this one particular crystal jumped off the counter and <laughs> broke this other one. Can oh. that really happen? I said, well, were you over dependent on that other crystal? And she goes, <laughs> yes. I said, because you weren't relying on your own gut feelings. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, that happens. <laughs> it's like the other crystal released the other crystal from you right. being reliant on it. Right. So, um, and that's one thing that I, I make sure of is, you know, even though I drink the water, mm -hmm. um, I'm not reliant on right. it to guide me. I allow, it's like, it just basically turns the light on mm -hmm. to everything that I already know internally. Right. So it's like, oh, okay, okay. All right. And I mean, it kind of went to something that you mentioned earlier about connecting mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of opening up to understanding that um, we are all already connected to everything mm -hmm. so there's just a little bit of sediment in the line of connection between me and whatever it is that I blocked from right so it's being consciously connected um, consciously aware so you know with crystals you know I do the same it's like you know oh thank you for that right you know? and sometimes I swear I feel and say thank you for taking me I really wanted to go I really needed to be with you today it's like thank you it's like they they say it back to you right so, right so it's like yeah being grateful is beautiful yes awesome so I was gonna um ask you about the the light machine that you use it has it look they look like points of like a quartz or something but they're all the colors of the chakras um is there are there crystals in the lights so um we're making another one Okay. Um, and it is a, it, it, it's a Vogel crystal light. Uh -huh. Um, and so it's a stand, uh, if that's what you're talking and referring about. So yeah. the, the lights themselves, they're not LED, they're not RGB lights. They're actually tuned to the color of the frequency, the frequency of that specific color that works okay. in that area uh -huh. of the chakra. And the crystals themselves are actually Vogel crystals. Okay. So they ha they're a 12 faceted, 12 cut um, healing quartz crystal. Mm -hmm. So this is where the shape would matter. Like it would affect right. the outcome. Right. So um, Marcel Vogel worked for IBM for like, over 27 years. And he's the one that kind of discovered that crystals could hold memory. And I'm mm -hmm. going to say he's not the one that discovered it. It's been around for tens and thousands of years. I mean, Lemuria. Um, right. He just re he realized or remembered it from yeah, like a past life. Yeah. yeah, there. And it was like, wait a minute. <laughs> so uh, he wanted to basically offer it as a healing modality. So he discovered with his education in science and math that numbers have, you know, a meaning. You know, there's a frequency behind the number. And if we can narrow it all in, just like, so those cuts are to the Pyramid of Giza. Mm -hmm. So 52 degrees, 52 by 51, I don't know all the, the math right, behind right. it. But, but when you can hone in on that energy and you have, uh, you know, something that, an intention that you need clarity on, um, it absolutely dials in. It's like, choop, it's like, mm -hmm. choop, and then here it comes. So... Um, that's why when we, you know, I put anybody on the table, what is your intention? Mm -hmm. and, and don't think of the intention from the negative. Like, I don't want to have this anymore. Right. Like, like I need clarity on X, Y, Z. And then it's, you know, pay attention to the smallest little thing. My mother used to tell me, pay attention to the quiet voice, not yes. the one that's rattling all the time. Mm -hmm. But the quiet one is where your answers come in. Um, so that's kind of what that does. Right. So that, that the light therapy, the color therapy comes into play mm -hmm. through through the crystals. So it come, there's a little light that just sh turns on and shoots right in the tip of the crystal. And then it comes right down into the solar plexus or right. wherever it is. Mm -hmm. The beautiful thing about it um, is the gentleman that made the one that we used, and it's at the Haven. Uh, not the Haven. It's uh, MD Sanctuary. So it's at Shanti's house. Um, uh, it, um, 
what he mentioned is that when you take a photo at a 45 degree angle, you'll actually see which areas are out of balance because it'll be so much brighter. Uh Um, And so the beautiful part is before someone even gets on the table, I already know which areas are going to be because off, you know, based off of our conversation, Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the solar plexus needs a lot of work. Uh, the, you know, the heart chakra or the throat chakra. Mm -hmm. And I love taking the photo because then I see it. Right. Wow. That's amazing. Um, but the interesting thing is it has all these different timers, um, and different selections, but I use the one, just the straight, you know, 30 minutes of just the straight light. Mm-hmm. And what happens is after the 30 minutes, you, you can take a picture of before and after. And I have many before and afters of after they're all the same color mm-hmm. because it does that, that, that just, it breaks it open. It's like, right. okay, let's, we've worked on this. We have an awareness of what the issue is and I'm willing to receive any kind of healing energy and any clarity coming through. Right. And so it's being open to that. So that's kind of what the bed does, or that light part does. Right. But the bed does something completely different. Right, because doesn't the, does the bed vibrate or? Yeah. Okay, because that, we, we haven't really went into the, the sound and the vibrational stuff yet, so. Yeah. So the bed that you laid on is mm-hmm. different than the one that we have um, at the house. Um, is it basically, so what I did then was I took the magnets. So I used the, in, in the medical, biomagnetic therapy we use the negative field um, because if you go out and you find yourself happy in nature, it's because mm-hmm. it's just infused with negative ions. When sometimes people go into the city and they just get so disturbed uh-huh. it's because it's so much energy and uh, all of that positive it's like ions. It's, overload. it's an overload of positive ions. Mm-hmm. And so that's why some people love the beach or right. love the mountains. Um, so when you utilize a negative field of a magnet, It basically just takes any disruption in the body and just, and it gives it a pure, clear flow. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it does help. I've had it um, on, I shattered my thumbs and actually used, that magnet shattered my thumbs. (laughs) And then I used the magnet to heal him along with some laser therapy as well, but, Mm -hmm. um, and ice. But, um, so what I did was I took crystals and I actually, um, infused them with the with the magnets Mm -hmm. and then i actually put them in the bed so Uh. the bed at haven we made a bio mat with um the magnets and crystals built into the bio mat Um, but this one is different so so in the bed at the chakra points Mm -hmm. there are crystals with magnets infused together and then um there's what we do is we play healing frequencies based on the session, you know, based on whatever it is that the client may need an additional little push. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, this is raw. This is something I learned about myself. And now I'm going to go into a healing space where I can just lay. And so sometimes when people lay on the frequency, they mm-hmm. feel the fr- it, it's almost at a discomfort. Like, like, um, like um, once it's a little painful, wait, wait, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it goes, Psh, that's right. that. Oh, no, I feel better now. Okay. And they just kind of go into it. So, well, it plays healing frequencies. And, yes, the table vibrates Uh um, because it's doing what it needs to do to really get that residual, anything that may be stuck somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's that residual and just pushes it out. Right. That's awesome. Yeah, I was watching a video on some of the magnet stuff. and, And this guy was putting magnets on the body. But I was like, I don't feel like she did that but it makes sense it's in the table yeah so you it was on you so we do both and okay. i actually did on your on your third eye okay i couldn't tell if that was a crystal because my eyes are closed when i do all this stuff so yeah. i'm just like guessing at what it looks like yeah so it's beautiful to put it there um, mm-hmm. you can use your thumb too uh, okay I'm, I'm sure some parents actually figured this out um if you rub right here with your child it's really calming uh-huh for them. i do that with i well, i've never thought about going up i always rub down mm-hmm. and then sometimes i'll kind of like yeah do this over her eyes but yeah it's just kind of well so up is energy and then oh. down is is relaxing okay um but with the with the third eye i can't remember exactly the reason for going up but mm-hmm. most of the time i will go up 
okay. with that. And I, there's a reason. I don't know yet <laughs> what that is. That's right. part of channeling in and just right. going, okay. It's just really intuitive. Like you feel that this is, you know, what the person needs. You don't necessarily have an explanation sometimes. Yeah. You know, it's like a gut feeling. So when you put it on the third eye, that also helps um, with the decalcification. Right. Of the pineal gland, a, right. a magnet there. That definitely needs to be a medical grade magnet mm -hmm. in, in the negative field. Because if you put the positive, you're going to go somewhere else. <laughs> right, right. I had never really thought about magnets too much. Um, there was a point where one of my friends had gotten me a bracelet and like this anklet that had the magnetic healing or whatever. So I didn't think about it, but I wore it and I went to the lake and I just was sitting there and all of these tiny little butterflies were on the mat. Like they weren't on me, just on the bracelet and the anklet. Mm. And I was like, this is like I took a picture of it. I was like, "There's literally 15 butterflies sitting on me right now," and so this there, there's something to it, you know. Mm -hmm. I'd be willing to bet that you actually had the the. the so some of those um, people like them, and then they get frustrated, mm -hmm. like they don't work anymore. You mm -hmm. know, they use neodymiums, and, and neodymiums are extremely powerful, but they also have uh, some of them have the the bipolar like north and south and the same uh -huh. so that's why sometimes people will use magnets and then you know, like three or four months and they're not working anymore mm -hmm. it's not penetrating deep in enough so neodymiums don't go far enough into the skin mm -hmm. they're a very powerful magnet but they don't penetrate deep enough within the physical body right where the medical grade magnets are thicker uh -huh. and they can penetrate up to eight to nine inches within the body ah, so okay. if you need it to work on the liver if you need it to work mm -hmm. something deep within then that's you know you know breast cancer uh, uh shanti actually had a, a spot where she healed herself with a magnet she just put Beautiful. it in there um so i mean it, it can help with a lot of different things mm -hmm. um you also have to be willing to to trust and and right trust and know that if i'm guided to use this it's going to work right um, right and so that kind of if, if you kind of have that inkling that it's not well, you know, it's not. Right. <laughs> you know, whatever you give more thought to is what's going to happen. Right. Um, so uh, the, 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 uh, I would willing to bet that you probably had the positive, the negative side out, uh -huh. which was attracting because, you know, they're like, okay. <laughs> um, so I, I, I'm, I'm guessing that that's right. probably what was happening on that. It was beautiful. You know, it's like almost like this epiphany of like, this isn't just suicide. It's like, you know, there is an attraction to this, so. That's really cool. All right. So let's see if time. we're getting close to time, but I kind of wanted you to maybe um, explain the I Ching to some people. And like when you use it, do you like how do you use it? Are you using the sticks? Are you using like coins? Like what's the, the medium there? So I have uh, bought dice that okay, I use. Okay, dice. Okay. And um, so I use that sometimes. <laughs> Most of the time now I'm using the coin method, which is the, um, I think they call it the RTC. That's a, I don't even know the, the technical name for it, but it's using the coin method. So mm -hmm. you flip a coin three times yes. um, and you two, you know, two heads is yes and two tails is a no. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have a question that you can't seem to get the ego mind out of. So mm -hmm. um, what I've understood about the I Ching is it truly helps you tune into your your inner senses mm -hmm. and, and to find your true self um the true self that you were born with right that was conditioned out of it out mm -hmm. of you and you know there's going to be very few people in this world that hasn't been conditioned um so it, it's it's learning to quiet the ego mind and, and the monkey mind mm -hmm. and the ego emotions and be the witness right and just kind of go okay uh uh this what is this trigger right now and what does this have to do with the, oh it doesn't it's similar mm -hmm. you know when we can recognize that triggers and and when people trigger us um that it may have a similarity to a pain that, that presented itself in childhood uh-huh but it's not the same. Right. But it's here to heal you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can either let it heal you or you can allow the ego to take over and just stand in that pain right. a little For, bit longer. Yeah, as long as you need to until you finally are like, okay, yeah, I'm ready to face this. Yeah. yeah. So there's so many different things. There's the original teachings of the I Ching, and that's not the I Ching that I'm reading. There's these two women that um, basically 
channeled their translation okay. of what the original I Ching mm-hmm. was supposed to say. Right. Um, anything that follows any kind of feudal um, belief system is not what the intention of the I Ching was meant. But, you know, it, it had its place in history and right. we can see um, so many more people are going, I just don't know why I feel this way. Well, uh-huh. you feel this way because that's your, that's your true self trying to tell you that this doesn't feel right to you. Right. Um, the other part of the I Ching that I truly appreciate is understanding what common sense really is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I hear people say it all the time. I actually hear people tell their children, use your common sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, and someone the other day said something about it. It was like, well, just use your common sense. And this was a businesswoman in a <laughs> meeting. I said, do you even know what common sense really is? Well, you know, being smart about something. I said, no, common sense is when, if you can utilize your common sense is when all of your senses are functioning together harmoniously. Mm -hmm. Your feeling senses, we're so divorced from our feeling senses. And that's kind of, to me, what the I Ching has done is Mm -hmm. really kind of forced me to go in and really tune into my feeling senses in a way that I naturally had when I was younger. Right. You know, know, I never, um, there was one thing, it was hard to raise, I'm certain for my mother, a child who was so standing in her knowing Mm -hmm. that, you know, sometimes it was frustrating to her, but she knew she had to allow me that freedom. Right. This is what I feel. Um, But we've been so divorced from that, you know. Do you know what you do you know that you like that piece of cake that you eat every Thanksgiving or are you eating it out of obligation? Right. You or know? like a habit like you just Yeah. It's like um n- no I, d- I don't I don't think I like that. Mhm. Um and it's fun to play with, you know, turning into your feeling senses and my mm-hmm. opinion that the best way to do it is to start with food. Right. You know, do I really like this? Right. Um or am I eating it because I was told that I could not you know I had to you know Aunt Charlie sent you know spent hours making this and she thinks it's your favorite thing (laughs) right and now I'm eating it out of obligation and it's probably not even good for my body right um so food is kind of like the starting point was like just just play with it right put it to your nose smell it actually Shanti taught me that one was you know, I always used to laugh at her because you would stick food to her nose before she would put it in her belly. always smelling food always (laughs) it because it like right now I'm doing the whole 30. So there's a lot that I'm not eating, but I'll make something for the kid and I'll, I'll smell it. And I'm like, that's all I needed. You know, like I don't actually need to eat the chocolate. I can remember what it tastes like. And that like, it's satisfying to smell. Yeah. So it's, it's funny. Like when you get um, like reconnected to the senses and in the spiritual community, we focus a lot like clear audience and like, you know, like, so hearing and thinking and all that, but we, we've, I don't think they talk about like the smell and taste that much. But when I do Whole30, I made a post about like essence drinks yesterday Mm. because I cannot taste them if I have sugar in my diet. Like they just, you know, I might get like a hint, but when I take the sugar out, I can actually taste it, you know? And it's kind of weird. Like, do we really like these things? You know, a lot of the stuff that we're eating or is it like a sugar addiction or, you know, like out of just a response, like you were saying, you know? So it's almost like you have to almost get disciplined and pull yourself out and then go back in. And and then you can see clearly like, oh, I actually do like this food. You know, I like it when I'm on and off sugar or whatever like it. But like really tasting something, you know, and realizing that our taste has almost been taken from us, you know, because we we were eating this diet that is manipulating, you know, how we eat. If you have to hire scientists and open a lab to create a food that they can make profit off of, right? then you, you, you know, the, these things, a lot of these, you know, fast foods and whatever, uh-huh. yeah, they've been scientifically modified right. to trigger your brain to say you like it. Right. <laughs> so it's like, uh, if it's not growing out of nature, maybe I don't need it. Right. Um, so, you know, and I say that as I had a soda, a kind of a couple of sips, I was, I was being called to have soda. And I'm like, right. I don't know why I need to experience this. Maybe I do. I don't know. Because um, I generally don't drink sodas. Right. Um, but, you know, my, my daughter was, uh, was one of my major teachers with that and my mother. Mm-hmm. So 
with my daughter when I noticed she was so sick when she was little and she would naturally pull away from certain foods. Mm -hmm. And so I watched my, my sister-in-law force my nephews to eat something that they didn't like. Mm -hmm. And, and it was not about that they didn't like it. It didn't resonate with their body. Their body said no. And so from zero to five years old, my daughter was constantly sick. And I finally said, this isn't a cold. I want you to test her for food right. allergies. Mm-hmm. And when they did, all the foods that she was telling me no, that I'm right. like, she that society says, these are good for you, that you need these things. Um, you know, she naturally, intuitively knew. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. She would, she would like, oh, I want this. And then she would, no. Right. You know? Um, and so... I learned a very hard lesson with that, you know, five years of my little girl being so sick. Right. And I had to witness that and be a part of it. I mean, it took away from, you know, my, my being able to go to work sometimes. Right. Um, but then my mother, um, I had a bout with lupus after uh, I had been, I had had lupus for many years, mm-hmm. uh, but I didn't know it. It was undiagnosed. And uh, when I lost my mother, that was when they were able to diagnose it because that was more stressful for me. So yes. the, the stress hormones showed up on the, uh-huh. the test and they finally said, oh, you're dealing with lupus. Mm-hmm. And when they said, you got to take these three different medications to treat it. Well, I was never a medication person to begin with. Right. Um, but the one option that wasn't like chemotherapy, I said, okay, I'll try that one. Mm-hmm. I just needed relief. And um, it started killing me. I mean, I walked into an ER, I didn't know that I was going to walk out saying, and the doctor said, you know, this is shutting your kidneys down. And I, oh. so they had to flush it out of me. So I went and got a second opinion at the Mayo Clinic. And when I was at that point of accepting, mm-hmm. this is my fate. Right. Um, I heard my mother's voice, excuse me. And she said, you're not done. And the moment that I accepted that is when I realized she raised me on herbs. She raised me on all these these natural things. Mm-hmm. And so I did that hardcore. This is life or death for me. Right. And I'm not going to allow medication to rule the rest of my life. And so I, I did a very strict diet for 30 days. Mm-hmm. And I, I felt like I felt. When I was 17, I felt right. so alive. It was mm-hmm. like, oh, wow. Just taking this crap out of my diet. These infl- meat was one of them. And that's not for everybody. But for me, right. meat caused inflammation in my mm-hmm. body. So I couldn't eat it anymore. So right. That's okay because I was vegetarian. And then I ate meat. And then now I'm vegetarian again. Right. So um, I feel much better. Mm-hmm. And that's tuning in to those senses. I always knew it. My mother raised me that way right you know when you tell a doctor oh i'm ovulating out of this side and they tell you it's impossible for you to feel that it's mm-hmm. like i can always tell things? which side i'm ovulating <laughs> on i literally can always tell yeah so that's just tuning back into right. it and so when i was 27 i consciously shut this stuff off because i was weird you mm-hmm. know everybody was like how do you know these things about me mm-hmm. and i'm like and they knew i worked for the government but they thought i was spying on them like i don't <laughs> I'm not spying on you. I just know I can feel you. I can hear you. I can sense you. Right. Um, so I divorced myself from everything that I had naturally just grew into mm-hmm. at 27. And then here I am in, you know, 40 something years old. And I'm like, okay, I'm ready to turn it all back on. <laughs> so you got to be careful when you ask for that. Um, uh-huh. But um, yeah, that's, that's where I am. And I'm, I'm okay with it and loving it. And I, I love when somebody's found me because they're ready. <laughs> right. That's the thing with, with you. You did just appear for me. Like I saw you in a group and I'd seen your name, which is very, stand, it stands out. I don't know anyone else with that name. <laughs> and then Philip made a post about what you do. And I just happened to be in a space where I'm like, I need a healer because I knew my grandma's death was going to hit me. So I'm like, I need support during this time. And I reached out to you, but it was like, you just showed up, you know, like you just appeared. But um, I don't know. Like. So the most beautiful part about being a healer is also receiving at the same time. Yeah. So even though you came in to me, I received from you. Oh. Um, so I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and any healer that's a true healer will know that they're not necessarily always the teacher. Right. Uh, when we teach, we also learn at the same we time. We also receive. Yeah. yeah. I can see that. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. All right. So as we wrap up this episode, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk with us and for being on the show. 
For those people who are interested in your healing services, what's the best way to contact you to find out more? Well, um, <laughs> my phone number, which phone. is um, 865-973-8212. Um, if it's here in Knoxville, I'm going to refer them to my partner, Shanti. Okay, yes. Um, 865-621-5301. <laughs> Um, and that's because I'm now in Nashville. Right, right. Um, but I'm going to be having my services there in Nashville, uh, just you know, not as full-time as I was. Right. Um, I do see clients here, but I have a few clients. And since you know, weekends really of our time, we, we only kind of will do one or two, and that's about it. Right. Um, so if they do want to see me, great. But um, Shanti's just as amazing. Oh, yes, if for not, sure. <laughs> you know, a little more stronger in some aspects than I am. So <laughs> Great, great. All right. Well, thank you again. Um, Tune in next Sunday for our latest episode of the Astral Hour, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.